Hi Gators, welcome to my first ever Facebook Live session. Uh, we're doing all kinds of neat things to connect with our alumni, connect with the campus community, and this is indeed the first time I've ever been on Facebook Live. Uh, if you all appreciate this, let us know. If it works, tell us how we can make it better, and uh, we'll keep doing it if, if it's of value to everyone out there in the Gator Nation. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about many of the developments that are occurring here on campus. They're just exciting things happening. The fall semester has started. And uh, after that, I'm, I'm going to uh, take uh, some questions. I've got one of my colleagues here who will be uh, looking at your questions. He'll read them to me. Um, so uh, feel free to uh, put out your questions even as I talk. Uh, and please do follow up. If you want to send me email personally, my email, my personal email is kent.fox at ufl.edu. But you, if you can't remember that, you can always send it to president at ufl.edu, and I read that as well. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. A special shout out to our alumni that are out there in the Gator Nation, just around the world, and also to all of our brand new students. There are 54,500 students here in Gainesville and online, uh, all across the, the world, actually, online, taking classes. Uh, it, the, nation, the Gator Nation is just uh, filled with students uh, that are just marvelous, strong, incredible, and we're uh, so, so pleased to start the semester. My wife and I started the semester for the first time by actually moving into Jennings Hall. We were in room 2026, 20, and we had a great time from Monday to Saturday. Uh, the students put up with us. Uh, we had a great time unloading uh, vans and cars, helping students move in. And in the evening, we did different things. On one night, Thursday night, we had a shaving cream fight. Uh, I thought I was going to lose my job, but uh, fortunately, the trustees didn't fire me. Uh, we had an open house in our room 2026. And uh, on, I think it was Wednesday night, we had Coach Becky Burley from a soccer team come over. Albert was there. Uh, we played a little ping pong, ate watermelon had a marvelous time with a bunch of our, our new students. And then we had uh, the great convocation and a special speaker, uh, as well as uh, a, uh, my uh, uh, amazing time in the swamp with, with all of our new students. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the things happening here on campus. If you were to visit here for the first time in a number of months or maybe a number of years, first thing you would notice is all, all the construction that's going on. Right on University Avenue is a brand new, spectacular chemistry building. It's, being, it's going to be called the Joseph Hernandez uh, Hall, and it will be used for teaching students uh, introductory chemistry, as well as faculty that will be conducting their research there. That facility will be opened in the spring. Secondly, you would see uh, Newell Hall under construction. Newell Hall was first used for agriculture research and extension, it is now being gutted, it's gutted actually, and it'll be finished this coming year, and it'll be a 24 by seven space for students to study, to collaborate, to work, and I'm proud to say indeed there will be coffee served and available. Uh, we'll also be opening the O'Connell Center. Commencement in December will be the first event that'll be there in the O'Connell Center, and it'll be available for the SEC season for basketball and uh, starting in January as well as volleyball and all the other sports and activities that take place in the O-Dome. It's, it's a brand new O-Dome. The only thing that's the same is the white shell on the outside. I'm looking forward to, to seeing it completed in just a, a few more months. So a lot of construction that's going on in, on campus. Secondly, we're hiring a large number of faculty. One of my highest priorities is to grow the number of faculty not just hire to replace faculty that, that may be retiring or leaving, but we actually want to grow the faculty. We have a, a student to faculty ratio that's higher than some of our aspirational peers. And I'll say a few things about rankings in a moment, but to address our excellence in education and research and to, a, to be at the very, very top of all universities, we need to hire more faculty. It'll, it'll help us be better in our education we're already spectacular, but it'll help us be even stronger. And it'll also help us in our quest to really drive the agenda for research and scholarship uh, worldwide. 
So we're doing that. We've, we've hired uh, both senior as well as uh, young new faculty. And for the coming year, we're asking the state of Florida to help us with this initiative to, to grow our number of faculty. Secondly, we're, we're working on investing in the sort of the deferred maintenance that, it, that is a need of the campus. It's not a very glamorous or sexy issue, but it's important. We have amazing buildings like Norman Hall that really need to be renovated. They're historic buildings, and you've got to invest in them. So we're, we're working on that as well. And if you came to campus, so you would see a lot of uh, activity around all the work the faculty are doing and teaching classes and their incredible scholarship. You'd see new buildings going up. And then you would see the students as they are out on Turlington Plaza, the Plaza of the Americas, and uh, you'll see some exciting things happening also in the area of athletics. I'm going to predict tomorrow's score against Kentucky at the end of my Facebook Live time here after the Q&A. Uh, I'll tell you the, uh, the score that you can take home and uh, share with, with all your colleagues. But before you do, I do that, I also wanted to mention the athletic director search. As many of you know, we've had the nation's very best athletic director for more than 25 years, Mr. Jeremy Foley. And we're in the midst of scouring the nation to get someone that has the same values that we share as a university, as Mr. Foley has done for the last 25 years, where we'll not only be the nation's leading university for athletics, but also the nation's leading university in support of our students that are athletes. Secondly, the breadth of excellence that we have in athletics across all of our sports, women's sports, men's sports, uh, just the, the 21 different sports that we have. We want an athletic director that will continue to support at, uh, excellence in all those sports. And then secondly, a person like Mr. Foley that will manage and be an amazing supporter of the organization, of our coaches, and of athletics, and be a, a member of our leadership team. Uh, I'm really optimistic that we'll get uh, a person that is wonderful in that position. USA Today had an article about our search. They described it. There was a quote in the article saying it's the very best AD position in the nation. And I think it's true. It's not just because of the president. It's because of the University of, of Florida. So we're, we're, we are not making an announcement in, in the real near future, but I'm optimistic that we're going to do that soon, and it'll be someone that the entire Gator Nation will be incredibly excited about. Well, that is a little bit of the news, just good things happening all across the, the university. Uh, a lot of events occurring, it seems like, every day, every night. Just yesterday, for example, we celebrated the 60th anniversary of our College of Medicine. Had an incredible gala uh, celebrating that college's uh, amazing past 60 years. And uh, I came back uh, as a character in their gala uh, 40 years from now. I was still president after 40 years. I was 101 years old. And I predicted that the College of Medicine at the University of Florida in 40 years will have cured cancer, will have cured heart disease, and everyone in the entire world's health will have been improved because of our College of Medicine. So we have high aspirations for the University of Florida. Um, I'll make one brief comment about rankings before I see what kind of questions you all might have. Uh, as you all know, there are uh, hundreds of ranking uh, services now that provide rankings of universities. We had one just last week in which the University of Florida was ranked number one in the entire nation. It was a combination of excellence as well as return on investment. And this is amongst both private and public uh, universities. And we are ranked anywhere from number one in the nation amongst all universities to, to significantly lower, depending on, on the ranking agency. Our goal as a university is in the next several years to be consistently, to be consistently in the top 10 of all universities, the public universities that have similar missions such as ours, and then secondly, over time, to even raise that further so that we're always in the top five of, of the universities. We're already in what I call the stratosphere of rankings. We're always amongst the very, very best research universities. There are only 300 of them in the entire nation. And we're in the, the top segment of all of those, those universities. So we, we have incredible aspirations for the future. And what I love is that our aspirations are getting a lot of attention. This ranking that came out last week 
said that the University of Florida is known for its aspirations for the future, for its goals for the future. And that, that I love. Well, I'm going to turn to my colleague uh, who's sitting next to me, Aaron Hoover, and see if we've had any uh, questions that I might address. Aaron? Uh, we have a question from Taylor Spangler. Uh, what is your vision for the future of IFAS extension? Hey, Taylor, I'm glad you asked. I've got a map I, I should show you all. Uh, maybe I'll do it in a, in a future Facebook live session. It's over on the wall, just, just around the corner here, that has the state of Florida, and on it, it shows all the locations where we have loca uh, a facility and a program, a program that says University of Florida on it. There are 140 locations outside of Gainesville where the University of Florida has a presence here in the state of Florida. And they, they, they go from the Keys all the way out to the Panhandle. The vast majority of those are associated with the Food and Agriculture Sciences, IFAS, our Institute for Food and Agriculture Sciences. But in addition to all those teaching and research stations and all the extension uh, uh, offices that we have in our 67 counties, we also have, all, uh, most of our colleges have programs across the state as well. So there are over 140 of those. To be very specific about extension, uh, the, the extension uh, uh, mission of our institution is something that's a part of our DNA. I was reading uh, one of our very first presidents uh, talking about the University of Florida. It was our second president, President Murphy, reading something he wrote back in the 1920s, and he was describing all the work of extension uh, back in the 1920s. It looked like something I could, could write today. He was talking about the hundreds of thousands. For us today, it would be millions of people that are touched by, by the extension. So for us, our, our, what we call our land-grant mission is part, in, indeed, not just of our heritage, but, but of our future. And it involves all of our colleges. Extension leads the charge, but every one of our colleges has part of its DNA as a mission to make the lives of the people of the state of Florida better. Okay, we have a question from Andres Esteller. Will the University of Florida commit to free speech by inviting speakers that may challenge status quo ideas held by a large number of students? Yeah, one of the, the great aspects of, 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 uh, of a great university, a marvelous university like the University of Florida, is that it is a place where students don't just hear things that they want to hear or things that they already know, but they're actually challenged. Uh, challenged politically, challenged intellectually, challenged personally. I think it's really important that we have speakers that come to campus that represent different viewpoints. They communicate respectively. We listen respectively, uh, but they, they challenge us, and we can challenge them back as well. So I, I look forward to having uh, uh, speakers from, from all kinds of, of perspectives and nationalities, politically, religious, etc. cetera. I, I, I value that part of university, and that's a, the kind of university we are. Okay, Erica Lynn asks, do you plan on opening any new programs or fields of study? Well, I think one of our future sessions, I'm going to invite some of our deans to join me, and maybe even our provost, our chief academic officer. It's really the deans and the department chairs and the chief academic officer that are at the heart of the university. I used to have each of those jobs. I used to be a department chair, a dean, and then a provost. And uh, so I, I don't want to do their job for them, but I will say, that on an annual basis, just in the year and a half that I, I have been here, we have uh, uh, closed several different programs that were not of interest to students anymore and, and started some new ones. Each of our deans is involved within their colleges in, in creating new, new courses and also new degree programs. But, but I will say the following, and that is right behind me, you, you may see some of these pictures right behind me. Those pictures are one, they represent the students in each of our colleges. I have, I have a photograph from every college. So there are, there are pictures, the same number of pictures as we have colleges. And uh, we're not going to change that number in, in any time in the near future. We're keeping all of our colleges. And what we're doing, though, is making sure the colleges are offering the courses, offering the degree programs that the students want, but also what we believe as faculty and academic leaders that are important for the future. So I can't tell you any specific programs we're, we're going to launch in the next uh, few months, but I'll invite the provost to come join me in a future meeting. Okay. Isabel Lopez asks, 
How will you balance graduate research and rankings with undergraduate programs? Yeah, one of the, the great things about the University of Florida's aspirations for the future is that we're unwilling to sacrifice research for teaching or teaching for research. We want to be the, the best at both, and I really believe, really believe we can. If you look at our numbers, just the number of students, I said at the beginning we have 54,500. That actually is an increase over last year, and it's increased before that. That growth is occurring in, in two areas. It's not occurring in the students that live here in Gainesville that are undergrads. We're keeping that number fairly stable. But we are growing the number of online undergraduate students, and we're growing the number of professional and research students, the, 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 the graduate students. And that's part of our mission, to, to keep the quality of the undergrad education at the very, very best, uh, grow the, the research capacity, and grow the professional schools, uh, but keep the undergrad population stable. As, as I mentioned early, we, we want to hire more faculty, but keep the number of undergrads about the same. And I, I think that allows us to have the right balance, where we're leading in both areas. We want to be the innovative leaders for education, but also the nation's leaders as well in the area of scholarship and research. That's part of our mission. We have a question from Kim Savidra. With, with two students at UF, are there any plans for increasing par parking opportunities on campus? Ah, I was wondering who was going to ask the parking question. Yes, we, we, we are working on uh, adding an, another parking garage. And actually, I had a meeting yesterday with our chief operating officer, uh, Senior Vice President Charlie Lane, and he's, he's working hard on creating a parking garage that will be multiple stories. Um, I would, though, encourage everyone as much as possible to, to use mass transit. We've got great mass transit here in, in the community uh, that is supported heavily by our, by our students and the university. Um, I have the advantage of living on campus, so I can walk to most events. Uh, and I know, though, not everyone can live on campus. So as much as you can, live a green lifestyle, uh, ride your scooter if you can safely, wear your helmet, please, I beg you. Uh, and ride bikes as much as you can or take mass transit. But I know some people have to, to have a, own a vehicle and ride it and drive it, and uh, we're, we're working on a, another parking garage. Okay, that's a good segue to a question from Denise Stagner. What about, sustainable, excuse me, what about sustainable energy for the campus? Hi, Denise. Thank you very much. Yep, it is, it is uh, something that is important to us. The whole Gainesville community is very proud of how much of the energy comes from a, a sustainable source. Uh, we... We have uh, a uh, cogen facility that is important to us that makes us much more efficient in terms of the energy that we do produce from fossil fuels. It allows us to not only produce energy, but also uh, for, for the, the campus electricity, but it also provides us ways of creating steam when we need that. And then we buy it from, from the local community and also from commercial sources. We're, as we construct buildings, we're very, very uh, focused on getting a, a LEED uh, certification that is at the gold or, or platinum status, if, if at all possible. In addition to that, we, we want, and the reason for that is we want to be, uh, cons con uh, conserve energy as much as possible. And we also are encouraging all of our employees and our students to also conserve their energy use, uh, because that's, that's a big part of it. Facilities, transportation, and then just the energy for things like, like lighting. It, it is important to each one of us. Ethan M.W. asks, what are your plans for improvements on the College of Fine Arts facilities? So the, the question is about the College of Fine Arts facilities. The highest priority for, for the College of Arts is, is the music building. And indeed, it, it turns out that we have a, a new build, music building as one of our priorities for the state. It's called a PECO list, P-E-C-O. I don't, I don't know what it stands for, but it's very important. And uh, that's the, the list that we provide to the to the uh, Board of Governors, that's the state university system, and that's the list then that goes to the, to, the, um, to the state legislature and also to the governor. So on that list, indeed, is, is the new music building. And it's also, I know, a priority for a number of our elected officials. We're going to have to raise a lot of money as well for such a facility. It would, a brand new building would probably cost us about $50 million. We don't have the exact details of such a building, but, but I know that it is the, the highest priority for a new facility from uh, Dean Lavelli. And uh, we're, we're, we're working on it. It'll happen, but it's a matter of, of uh, two things. Uh, primarily, what the state is able to do, and also, secondly, what we're able to raise. 
I do want, though, to be, to be clear. We have several facilities that have already started where we have some of the state funding, but we're asking the state to finish the... Okay. What, let, let me... Oh, I, my, it looked like we were reconnecting there. Um, and those, those two facilities are, are Norman Hall and then uh, what's called the Nuclear Science Building in Engineering. Um, but this is the last year where we hope to get the final funding for that, and then we can move on to the new initiatives. Okay, so Sunshine Moss just asked us, Norman Hall, the College of Education, has mold and moss growing on external walls. We often have sandbags in front of our library to prevent flooding. The state has agreed to renovate Old Norman, which is desperately needed, but that, is not, that does not address the old building. What plans does the university have to address delayed maintenance in the College of Education? Yep. It, it, let me make a, a broad statement first. Otherwise, we're going to go through each of our colleges. And, and the reason for that is each one of them has real significant, what we call deferred maintenance needs. And it, that is actually at the top of our list of all the facilities funding, all of the PICO uh, funding. We have about $60 million in deferred maintenance. This is true of all universities, but particularly acute at a university like the University of Florida, where many of these buildings were built in the early 1900s, some back in 1906 when we first moved here to Gainesville. So deferred maintenance broadly is, is a, a critical issue. It's not something we can fundraise for uh, because uh, uh, donors typically want to create new spaces, not fix old. It says, it's, oh, we were reconnecting, but we're back again. Um, so uh, the, the College of Education is one of those. And certainly the Norman Hall is one we worked for many years and getting the funds for the beginning of that, but there's more to do there, and we're working on it. Chris, Chris Carmody asks, or says, we are here at UFAA's Florida Forward Conference. How can we as alumni support UF in gaining top 10 public status? Uh, there, there are many ways. First off, everyone should join the Alumni Association. Linda, my wife, and I are lifetime members. Um, you know, I don't have a UF degree. I wish I had gone here. But I was able to join as a lifetime member. I had to pay the, the regular price like all, everyone. Uh, but everyone should join, and hopefully as a lifetime member. That actually impacts directly our rankings if, if you do that. Uh, and uh, many of the rankings agencies measure how many of your alumni actually contribute back to the university at any level. So becoming a member. Number two, uh, getting the word out about the University of Florida that we're on the move, that we are making progress in becoming one of the very best. We're already at the top of the stratosphere of universities, but we want to be not just in the top 10, but very one of the very, very best, getting that word out. And then, then lastly, in a similar vein, wear your blue and orange, and particularly tomorrow, wear your orange. Uh, people, will, people notice skaters, and uh, just getting the word out, being proud of your institution. There's so much to be proud of, as I've learned over the past year and a half here. Uh, and then lastly, Help us recruit just amazing students to come to this university. Okay. Jeffrey Grogan writes, women account for a disproportionate share of the enrollment at UF, parentheses, 45% male, 55% female. And I would like to know, he, he has two questions. I would like to know if you have a plan to increase male enrollment and what plan do you, do you have to increase national and international student enrollment? Yep, so two, two great questions. One is about the gender balance. Uh, and the second is about our international students. So the, uh, one of the interesting tr trends nationally is that a smaller percentage of males are going to college and a growing number of women, of females, are going to college. Nationally, it's now the balance of 60% of the college students applying and going to college this fall were women and only 40% were men. Uh, the men need to get to work and start going to college get their grades up, and uh, go get the college degree. Uh, so that's, that's number one. Here, we don't quite have that balance, but we're seeing a similar balance in terms of just the number of applications. Uh, so I think the, the key message there is to obviously encourage women, but secondly, more importantly, encourage men to, to, to study while they're in high school, take higher education seriously, and, and to pursue a college degree. And if that happens, then, then that balance will occur here at the University of Florida. The second question was about international students. So one of the areas of diversity that we want to enhance is the international student population here at the University of Florida. Almost all of our peers have about 
of their undergrads that are come from other countries. What that does is it provides networking opportunities for our existing students here from the state of Florida. It actually enhances their education if they know people from around the world. Our percentage historically has only been 1%, 1%. So it, we, we have work to do there, I believe, and, it's, and it will help the education of our current students. And secondly, it actually helps us in our quest to raise our reputation and our stature. If we have people here from every country in the world, every nation in the world, then those nations are going to know about the University of Florida. Uh, Jeffrey Grogan also asked about national students. Do we have plans to increase our national student enrollment? Uh, I assume that, Jeffrey, I assume that means uh, students from, from other states. Uh, it, it, uh, we, again, have traditionally had about 6% of our undergrads being from, from, from other states. We're always going to have the vast majority of our students will be from the state of Florida. Uh, we, we are already the place where students want to come study from across the state of Florida. But I also believe that if we're going to raise our national visibility, we need students from every state. Alaska, North Dakota, South Dakota, you name it, we, we need students there. So with this balance of having the vast majority being from, from, other, other, from within the state of Florida, I also believe part of our mission of, of increasing our diversity across gender, across ethnicity, also includes having people from, from every state. So I, we do want to increase that number from 6% to something a little bit higher. Okay. A new question from John Clark. I heard on Malcolm Gladwell's podcast that UF is very effective at providing financial aid to the poorest of our state. How did you make that a priority? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. I, I didn't know about Mr. Gladwell's podcast. I want to get a copy of that. If you could email me a link to it, I'd love that. Just uh, kent.fox at ufl.edu. It, it's actually true. The New York Times had an article about that where we were number six in the nation. And two things. One is this combination of students from economically diverse backgrounds coming to the University of Florida, but secondly, actually graduating. You know, it doesn't do any good if they're admitted and, and then after the first year they leave uh, because of their need uh, or just the lack of trying to rec Oh, we're back. Um, it, uh, so we actually w want our students from all backgrounds, uh, including diverse financial uh, backgrounds, to actually graduate if they come to the University of Florida. And we're actually one of the very highest in the nation, particularly amongst public universities. And the percentage of students that have Pell Grants, that's the, an indicator of financial need because they're getting actually support from the federal government based on their need. And then the percentage of those Pell Grant students that actually graduate, we're right there at the top amongst all universities, public, private, you name it, in, in the top six in the in the nation. I'm just so incredibly proud of that because that indicates, again, this combination of academic excellence because we're supporting the students, we're educating them, they're actually graduating, they're becoming Gators, and over a third of them are getting, uh, they, they have, they're getting financial aid from the federal government. One of our highest priorities in fundraising for our campaign is to have more financial aid. We have marvelous programs. We have something called the Match in Florida Opportunity Scholars Program. Uh, but that program needs to be endowed and it needs to grow. Uh, and so financial aid for needy students. We have wonderful uh, financial aid that's available to all students that's purely merit-based. I want merit-based aid that is need aware. So it goes to our, the students that have a financial need. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. Here's one from Dave Beyer. What are we doing to increase student body diversity, improve women's safety on and around campus, and improve hiring postgraduate success? Oh, wow. So three things. Okay. Uh, give me the first okay. one again, Aaron. The increase student body diversity. Okay. Student body diversity. So I've addressed some aspects of diversity. I've talked about gender. I've talked about geographical. And I've talked about financial. Let me just make a, a comment about uh, racial and, and ethnic diversity. Um, you all should know that just to begin with, if you compare us to any of our peers, we're one of the most diverse uh, uh, racial and, and in terms of ethnic diversity uh, universities in the entire nation. We have a set of, of universities that we compare ourselves. They're the top 15 uh, most research intensive public universities in the nation. And those that includes places like Berkeley and Michigan. You, you, you name your, your favorite university. If it's one of those very best research universities, 
uh, we are there amongst that, but we also track all kinds of metrics. One of the metrics we, we, we uh, look at is indeed the ethnic and racial diversity. And we are number three in that list in terms of things like the number of, a percentage of our students and number, we're higher actually in number, but if you look at percentage, we're number three in that list in the percentage of our undergrads and graduate students that are African Americans. We're number two in the number of African Americans that we graduate to get PhDs. We're number three in the percentage of the faculty that are African American. And then we're number three also in the percentage of our employees, broadly speaking, that are African American. Now, do we want to actually increase that in number? Absolutely. We're working hard on doing that. We've got admissions and financial uh, aid programs that are they're going to help us, we believe, in terms of how we're recruiting both, both our employee side, faculty side, as well as our student side. So, but, I, but I wanted to have a shout out and say that we're, we're not starting at the bottom. We're starting at a place I'm really uh, proud of, but we actually want, want to be at the top because we've got a lot of work to do. We're not proud of where some of our competitors are, and, and we need to, to exceed them in those areas. What were the other two areas? The, other, the second one was improve women's safety on and around campus. Yeah, women's safety is, is oh, well, the safety of all our students is important, as, as you all know. And uh, so it is. We, we have actually, this past year, had a partnership with the city of Gainesville in investing in lighting, not here on the campus property, but in the neighboring communities. We actually helped fund that in a partnership with the Gainesville Police Department and with the mayor of Gainesville. Uh, we're, we're always working on, on that. It's something that I, almost every meeting I'm in, safety, whether it is with our own leadership or with, this, with our trustees, uh, is, is important. You know, a big part of all of that is the consumption of alcohol. We have a, a, something called the Alcohol Commission. It is, it is a, a group of about 40 of us, that, that, that I, for which I call the meetings. It's led also by our Vice President for Student Affairs. And it, we track all the incidents that, uh, that involve campus police or local police or other incidents involving alcohol, alcohol abuse. It is such an important part of safety. So we ha we're, we're, we're working on that. Uh, we have work to do. We want, us, we want to be not just a safe campus. We want to be a, one of the very most safe campuses. Uh, and it requires a partnership of all of us, not just our, our, our uh, safety officers, but it requires uh, diligence by all of us that work here, all of us that live here, and, and the students as well, as well as our proprietors and, and, and the community, as I mentioned, uh, the Gainesville and Alachua County. Okay, the last part was, what are we doing to improve uh, postgraduate success? Postgraduate success. So the, uh, the, I, I assume what you mean by that would be the percentage of our students that, well, first off, the percentage of students that actually graduate and get a degree. Um, and I think that, that you all know that University of Florida leads in that area. More than 86% of, our, of, a, of the students that start on day one a couple weeks ago will become Gators. Uh, and get a, get a degree from UF. Now, that, that is actually, turns out to be at the very top of, of any of our peers. We can always do better, we're working hard on that, but we're, we're way at the top. Uh, but then, then once they graduate, getting a job. This is a priority for not just the University of Florida, but actually by our elected officials, and so it's, again, it's something that we track. I, sh I wanna give a shout out to our Career Resources Office. Our Career Resources Office has done several things uh, to help our students connect with employers. First off, we have the largest career fair in the entire Southeast, any university in the Southeast. So bring in companies to campus to connect with our students. And what we've done this past year is actually embed career resources staff here in the different colleges. So it used to be that career resources would only be located centrally. These are the staff members that will connect a company with, with students that are seeking an internship or a uh, job uh, for employment afterwards. But what we've done is added, we've hired new career resources staff and embedded them in the colleges. So if you're in liberal arts and sciences or in the, uh, in the Wertheim School uh, Engineering or in the business school, the Warrington School, you'll, you'll have career resources staff members right there nearby while you're taking classes. Again, something that we want every student that wants a job to have it. We've got work to do to, to get to that point uh, but it is something that we are we're investing resources in. Okay, last question. This one's from Kian Nauruzi. Who cuts your hair? It is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> so I go and see Jay. Are, are you related to Jay? Jay's my barber. 
and he's on the ground floor of the rights union. And I'm going to demand a commission. Okay, so let me, let me give you all the final score for tomorrow. And this is the uh, game against Kentucky. So I'll be wearing as much orange as I can, put on my orange socks. I don't have orange shoes yet, but uh, I'll, I'll wear as much orange as I can. And uh, I have a tradition, and that is that my wife and I, at the end of the game, as the players are leaving the field, we stand under the goalposts and clap for them. So if you're there, you'll, you'll see us doing that. And that's cheering on our players at the end and just thanking them for, for all their hard work and for everything that our, all of our players do. Um, so the score tomorrow will be 21-15, Gators victorious. Go Gators! <laughs>